Hello and welcome back to Historical Geology. This is the latter part of chapter 13 on Paleozoic plants. And really plants face a similar barrier that animals face into going on the land. They had to deal with desiccation, the support against gravity, and a way to, to reproduce in an aerial environment out of the water. We find that plants really started developing in the late or division, but by Silurian time they started taking off and then the De Devonian period really marked a, a big diversification for plants. They had to make that transition from seawater to fresh water to land. Um, and you'll find that there's two groups of plants that we look at. There's a non-vascular plants and these plants do not have specialized cells for water nutrient movement. In other ways they don't really have the plumbing like from a root through the special cells and uh, that leads up to the to the leaves and the rest of the plants. Examples of these are the bryophytes and the bryophytes include the mosses, the hornworts, and the liverworts. The other group of plants are the vascular plants and these are the ones that have those specialized cells for movement of water and nutrients throughout the body of the plant. And you'll find for the vascular there's seedless vascular and there's seed vascular. And here are some bryophytes here, some uh, liverworts, and then here are is a fern, which would be a, a seedless vascular plant. The ancestors of all terrestrial vascular plants was probably some type of green algae. We know that green algae has made a transition from seawater to, to fresh water, and the problem of desiccation was superated by the evolution of cutin. So cutin is the organic compound found in the outer walls of plants. Primitive seedless plants, such as ferns, resemble green algae in their pigmentation, metabolism, reproductive cycle and again some of these plants green algae have made it to the land. Now for the seedless vascular plants the important fossil here is Cooksonia and Cooksonia seem to have these spores only at the top which it would need to shed its gamut into an aqueous environment because the sperm needed to travel in moisture to get to the ovule. So it needed that moisture and often these had a root like rhizome so the rhizome is sort of like a tuber or a crom, and then that would give water to the plant. Based on the sedimentary rocks where Cooksonia is found in, these rocks are muddy bottoms or wet, so it must, be, it must have been a wet environment. And the Cooksonia plants are Devonian, but by Carboniferous time, we find that these seedless vascular plants really dominated, and really they ended up becoming the main Carboniferous coal deposits we see later on, the coal swamps. Seedless vascular plants evolved many of their major structural features characteristic of modern plants. But the things about leaves and roots and other secondary features that plants have, they didn't evolve at the same time. So your book makes a point about saying how they evolved, how they evolved at different times, and they call that a, a mosaic evolution. Early Devonian landscape was dominated by relatively small low-growing bog-dwelling plants. So here's an early Devonian landscape with some Cooksonia in here. Then by, by late Devonian, we see that the plants get bigger, it's more dense, we get these up to 10 meters tall, so there's a definite rapid change in the plant evolution there. The evolution of the seed at this time liberated plants from their dependence on moist conditions and allowed them to spread throughout all terrestrial environments. Think about the seedless vascular plants. They require moisture for successful fertilization because the sperm must travel to the egg on the surface of the gamut bearing plant, that geophyte. And that will produce the adult plant basically. Whereas for the seed method that developed in the late Devonian, the spores are not released to the environment. Instead, they are retained on the spore bearing plant where they grow into a male and female forms of the gamut bearing generation. So we'll find that these seed bearing plants are going to be either the gymnosperms and they're flowerless seed plants like the conifers and those like pine trees and they really developed in the late Devonian period. The other group are the angiosperms and we won't see these guys till Cretaceous time so they're the flowering plants. Now thinking about what I'm, what's going on over here with the egg traveling on the surface and must have that moisture. So here we have a seedless vascular plant like a, like a fern and it produces these spores and then the spores germinate to produce the gamophyte 
and see here there's there's female parts the eggs and the male parts the sperm and this must need a moist environment for the sperm to make it to to the eggs and so that's why it needs to be near moisture before it can make the the adult bearing plant the sorophyte here whereas the gymnosperm the seeded plants note that the male and female parts are enclosed within that seed and then depending on fertilization whether it's wind fertilizer or wind pollinator uh, we can get the sperm to make it to uh, these cones and then you can reproduce in this fashion here now for the Pennsylvania coal swamps remember we're starting to develop the gymnosperms of seeded plants but really the Pennsylvania coal swamps that eventually make all this coal for the Carboniferous really develop from the seedless vascular plants they dominate and the two important groups are the lycopods and the sphenopsids some of these lycopods reach 30 meters tall the lycopods were present during the Devonian chiefly as small plants but by the Pennsylvanian they were huge they achieved heights of 30 meters 90 feet so lepidodendron is this fossil here and, and one thing is that as they grew they grew really tall trunks and then they branched out only at the at the top and as they're growing these branches would fall off and so the barks of these uh, lycopods would leave these kind of scale structures so that's very typical of these lycopods in fact this was lepidodendron whereas the sphenopsids which are the the horse tails and scouring rush those are modern versions but the calamites were the one that the ones that were dominant back in the Pennsylvania and these sphenopsids were characterized by being jointed and having horizontal underground stem boring roots and they were anywhere from five to six meters tall so often in the fossil record we see these little leaves in uh, as carbonization deposits here and then they had this sort of branching segmented trunks as well and then by late carboniferous and into the permian we begin to see the seed bearing vascular plants are to take over especially the gymnosperms the flowerless seeded plants and these will start making conifer forests and we find that by the time we get into the triassic and jurassic into this mesozoic era uh, we find that we have huge conifer forests of gym gymnosperms and then uh, remember male cones and female cones so there's no need for moisture and then by the time we get to the cretaceous that's when we start seeing the angiosperms which are the flowering plants